Gentlemen, I'd like to call to order the Westmont Village Board meeting of October 26, 2017 to order at 6 o'clock p.m. and ask Clerk Simsky for roll call, please. Mayor Gunter. Here. The clerk's here. Trustee Annington. Here. Trustee Barker. Here. Trustee Barry is at a parent-teacher conference. He will be here as soon as he gets out of the conference and across the tracks. <laughs> um, Trustee Guzzo. Here. Trustee Little is absent tonight, and Trustee Neal. Here. Would everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone. Uh, Tonight's kind of an exciting night with the promotions and some awards that will be given out for our Scarecrow uh, contest. But I'll start with the open forum. And we do have a request uh, from our uh, Post 338 to Westmont American Legion, Frank Trout. He's brought company with him. A part of the, um, excuse me, part of the, um, presentation tonight, uh, you did mention uh, Scarecrow. Mm -hmm. uh, Manager, uh, would you come forward, please? Uh -oh. Yes, sir. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little humor with the Scarecrow. Uh, <laughs> okay, he looks like one. <laughs> I guess I'm... Uh, <laughs> we'd like to present you, Ron Grunther, with this award for your many years of service to American Legion Post 338, Village of Westmont. Ron, over the years, has done an outstanding job of supporting us uh, in almost every endeavor uh, which we uh, tried to accomplish. And he is with us 100% um, supporting us in every way. And um, uh, now that he, he was uh, the director of the Park District. Now he's the mayor of Westmont, and he's continued to support uh, the American Legion. And we just would like to recognize him tonight. Mayor Ron. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ron. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, we're going to talk about Veterans Day. That's the next thing All on right. the list. Thank you. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, Veterans Day is uh, November the 11th. It uh, falls on a Saturday this year. Uh, it will be you at know, uh, Ty Warner Park at our Veterans Memorial. Uh, it will start at 11 a.m. And so we uh, encourage all who can make it to please uh, come out, support the, uh, the veterans. And... Um, we usually have a, a, a pretty good showing on that. And um, again, 11 o'clock on the 11th day of November, the 11th month, uh, for Veterans Day at Ty Warner Park. Thank you all. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Frank. Um, that was quite a surprise, so thank you. Um, the least I can do, I've told them that I have never had an opportunity to serve, but. I appreciate all they do. So whatever I can do to help, I'll always do that. So thank you. Uh, that's all we have for open forum. Uh, we're going to move on to reports. And like I said, tonight's kind of a, a busy, fun, good night. We have promotions, and we have some awards to give out. So uh, before we start that, I'm going to ask Chief Weiss or um, yeah, Chief Weiss is going to update everybody on the Speedway, and here comes Chief Conley, um, <coughs> as far as where we're at with the, um, the gas leak. Thank you, Mayor and Board. And, uh, Deputy Chief Conley was the uh, instant commander of this uh, unfortunate situation that happened this last week. I, I just want to take a few quick minutes to brief the Board and the Mayor and, and our citizens about how proud I am of our whole team in the village here. Um, they came out um, when, when the need was arose with the situation. It was a major incident. Uh, we're uh, 
trying to wrap this up. We're working together. We have Unified Command still in, in place. Um, we had um, a lot of agencies, Deputy Chief Connolly, I'll go over that today, but uh, it was um, a, a great learning experience. Uh, but at the same time, uh, everything that our department heads and our staff uh, that we have here in the village, everything clicked just like we're trained. And I just want to tell you that you should be very proud of all your staff that you have uh, in this village because every department worked together, just not within the village, but outside the village too. And with that, I'll let Deputy Chief Connolly. Thank you, Chief Mayor. So to try to do this quickly is a fairly complicated incident. I'll try to give you the 30,000 foot view. Uh, there was, as you know, a significant hazardous materials incident last week. Uh, you know where it was at Speedway, 6241 South Cass. Uh, try to share with you some highlights of the scope, duration, challenges, and the response. Uh, this incident probably actually started on Thursday, the day before in Westmont. The uh, first indication that there were undetermined odors in the Knowles apartment complex in Willowbrook on Thursday afternoon, followed by manhole explosions that evening. The Tri-State Fire Protection District, Flag Creek Water Reclamation, and the Illinois EPA investigated, flushed those mains, or sorry, those sewer mains, and they were tested clear. They were not sure of the product or the source. On Friday at approximately 9.30 a.m., there was an explosion in Knowles apartment complex with one serious injury. A 400-unit apartment complex was evacuated as a precaution with a second alarm fire response. Flag Creek, Tri-State, fire mutual aid companies, including Westmont companies, uh, a, P a police department, Ileas Callout, IEPA and others assisted with that effort. Uh, Westmont fire, <coughs> excuse me, fire Department responded to the Speedway gas station at 6241 South Cass and found gasoline flowing into the sewer on the south side of Benningford, south of the Speedway. <coughs> uh, I was notified, I responded and confirmed there was gasoline leaking uh, in the ground in the sanitary sewer, into the storm sewer and uh, unknown where it might, might or might not be going underground. Uh, additional fires and explosions occurred along 63rd Street near Bentley and Tennessee Avenues within approximately one hour after our arrival at uh, Speedway. Essentially at that point, everything downstream from Speedway to the treatment plant for Flag Creek, which is at I-55 and 294, uh, was at some level of risk. The sanitary sewer generally follows 63rd Street from Cass Avenue to the treatment plant, and it varies, but approximately one mile either side of 63rd Street. A uh, very rough estimate of that area is approximately 10 square miles. I estimated approximately 25,000 people exposed, including single family uh, residents, apartments, commercial, schools, uh, daycare centers, and others. There were approximately 10 fires and explosions of various types, uh, almost all in Willowbrook. Uh, three were serious, uh, two had injuries. Uh, only one of those injuries miraculously was a hos hospitalized. Uh, all the area fire departments, Westmont, Tri-State, and Pleasantview, which were the three affected areas, uh, investigated hundreds of reports of odors, and there were some evacuations. The total response for this incident on Friday, including the incident in Willowbrook, incidents in Willowbrook and Westmont, including, included 10 police departments, seven public works department, 12 county and state agencies, 32 fire departments, plus 12 additional fire departments that stood by as a task force in McCook. Uh, at the Speedway gas station, we established incident command and eventually we call area command, which covered everything from Westmont to I-55 and 294. That lasted from approximately 10 a.m. until midnight that night. Uh, I personally spoke with Speedway rep <coughs> representatives in Ohio, stressing the importance of and a need for their assistance. We initiated hazardous materials box alarm, bringing technicians from 12 departments to assist. Our priority was stopping the flow of gasoline at the point it was entering the sanitary sewer. We installed temporary plugs in various locations, and the Westmont Public Works Department and hazmat teams worked together to contain the stormwater release that was heading west of Cass Action, Cass Avenue. Sorry, uh, multiple actions were taken, including flushing se the sewer system over several days including the addition of uh, over 2,000 gallons of emulsifier. Uh, multiple monitoring teams, initially fire department, and then on Saturday we turned over to Speedway to continue to monitor the sewer system and homes. Uh, ventilated the sewer system, conducted a reverse 911 and other emergency notifications to the affected area. 
that prompted dozens of calls for more order investigations and more than a dozen fire companies assisted with checking out those homes. A marathon emergency response team supporting Speedway arrived Friday night. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, they hit the ground running. They supplied pumps, vac trucks, emulsifier, frack tanks, monitoring, and all other resources uh, that we requested. Approx they had approximately 50 people on site by Sunday night and more than 150 by earlier in the week. Speedway replaced the uh, Flag Creek sewer line behind the Speedway and a sewer line on their property. Uh, they've inspected Flag Creek sewer system by using cameras to confirm there's no further infiltration into the sewer system. They installed monitoring wells along their property and found no offsite uh, migration underground. Uh, starting Sunday, there were marathon teams with industrial hygienists, customer relations personnel, and sometimes plumbers that were checking individual homes that had made an odor complaint as well as homes surrounding the, in the surrounding area. Unified Command System and the Command Center at Westmont Fire Department Headquarters has been operate, operational since the incident. Uh, Deputy Chief Riley and I made a decision late, actually early, very early Saturday morning, to offer our headquarters as the site for that command center. Uh, we agree it was probably the best uh, decision we made that day. Uh, this facilitated our combined response for the next week. For example, Speedway was monitoring fire calls in real time for all the affected areas and was dispatching their own personnel to assist with investigations. Uh, there are several ongoing investigations, including those by the State Fire Marshal, EPA, the Attorney General, and us. Overall, it was an excellent team effort working with Marathon and Speedway. It was an excellent team effort among state, county, and many municipalities, one of the largest uh, number of agencies that I'm aware of. And finally, as the Chief said, it was a great team effort within the village with almost all departments involved in some aspect of the emergency response. And as the incident commander, I'd like to personally thank uh, everyone that assisted and without their assistance that could have turned out uh, much differently. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Chief, everything I've heard is um, we did a tremendous job. And I know Deputy Chief Riley uh, and Chief Lysa was out of town. So you, How convenient. And you look. <laughs> Well, and the manager was too, so let's. Uh, we, we noticed. <laughs> the, um, and you look good on TV with oh, the, thank you, sir. your hat on. So, um, along with that, um, Spencer Parker was the acting village manager, so he pretty much stayed out there the entire time, and Larry McIntyre coordinated all the uh, information that was being Correct. sent out. So, those two staff members pretty much were available the entire time. So we really appreciate everything you've done. Thanks. I, I don't trust he's got a, like he said, there's an investigation going on. I had an opportunity to meet with Speedway um, staff today. Uh, and they're going to make sure, uh, they're going to redo the whole station. <coughs> Correct. So thank you. One thank question you. Yes, sir. Uh, before you step down. Um, folks, even now, although it's been a few days since the incident, if they still have concerns or feel that they're smelling something, Call you call the the command center at South no, Station. No, call call nine one one. Call nine one one. Any any because this could be anywhere from here to again through Pleasant Views District. So. But just call nine one one and tell them. Spell order. Have any concern? Call nine one one. Fire department will check it out. If uh, there's other resources needed, uh, we have resources available from Speedway to assist, and they also are assisting homeowners that have been displaced and whatever whatever is needed, they're taking care of. Just, just another example, I, I always am so proud of you guys when you see everyone else getting evacuated out and told to leave, you guys are going in. So, uh, you know, really just brave men and women who uh, on our forces. So again, thanks guys. Yes. Thank, thank you, you. Trustee Bear. Thank you. Thanks. Moving on, uh, this is where um, I'll ask Chief Gunther to come up to the podium and we can have our promotions. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before I begin, as the uh, police department files in, uh, you'll notice that uh, several of us have uh, facial hair, which we've now been growing for a month. Uh, this is no better way of showcasing uh, this than having a whole bunch of people pile in. Um, this is our uh, fundraiser for Special Olympics. Uh, to date, with the, uh, our beard-a-thon, we've raised $3,000 for Illinois Special Olympics. Uh, there's 16 members of the police department that are participating. Uh, each officer donated $150 uh, for the privilege of having a beard till the end of the year, including myself. <laughs> 
So with that, uh, I am absolutely honored and privileged. Uh, this is a great night for the police department. Um, I, I couldn't be happier with, uh, with the three promotions that uh, we have before, um, before the board tonight. Uh, first of all, I would like to, you know, we have uh, Deputy Chief uh, Thompson to be sworn in, Sergeant Rinaldi and Sergeant Bukovic to be sworn in uh, as sergeants. And I would like to first acknowledge the family members that have shown up, which is pretty much this section of the room. <laughs> so starting with Deputy Chief Thompson's uh, family, we have uh, Steve's wife, Kim, son, Sean, and daughter, Allie. Um, parents, Dennis and Cheryl, and then in-laws, Bud and Doris. My man, Bud. <laughs> uh, Sergeant Bukovic has uh, his uh, daughter, Ashley, son, Tyler, sister, Cheryl, uh, and brothers, Phil and Tony, in attendance. And Sergeant Rinaldi has uh, father, Tony, mom, Terry, uh, sister, Leah, uh, uh, brother-in-law, Matthew, and niece and nephew, Madison and Zach. So I think I got everybody. It was, it was fluid, it was changing as, uh, as we came up to the six o'clock hour, so I think we covered everybody. Um, I'd like to start with talking a little bit about the, the process to um, promote, because there are two different processes for uh, the deputy chief and sergeant. So starting with the deputy chief, um, we had uh, four sergeants apply for the position of deputy chief, and this was uh, based on Deputy Chief Brenz's um, my, my promotion and then Deputy Chief Brenz's retirement earlier this year, uh, which created the spot. Um, the, um, I convened a panel of uh, the village manager and other department heads along with Larry Forsberg, who was nice enough to sit down on the interviews, and we interviewed uh, the four candidates. And um, ultimately it was my decision, but I weighed heavily on the recommendation of the board um, for the selection of Deputy Chief Thompson. And I'd like to thank the, all the participants of that panel. Um, I relied very heavily on, on their input and it was, uh, it was a really, really good process. So that was uh, my appointment uh, for Deputy Chief Thompson. And the sergeant process is uh, different. This is a process that is run by the uh, Fire and Police Commission. And I believe we have uh, Chairman Cavanda and Commissioner Musial and Commissioner Stella is here. Our newest commissioner is here. So the three commissioners are here. Um, so the sergeant testing process uh, actually started three years ago because we have a three-year list and uh, that list is up, I believe, uh, will expire this December. So this is the tail end um, of the list and I think off of this list we've promoted six sergeants. And uh, so it's a lot of work for the commission. It's a lot of studying and a lot of uh, uh, due diligence by the, the patrol officers to make the sergeant list. And um, it's, it's a very important function that everybody plays. So I'd like to thank the Fire and Police Commission for their hard work. Uh, they had interviews, they have to do all the, um, they have to get the testing company, they have to uh, review the personnel files, they have to you know, slug it out in the back room to figure out uh, who's gonna get promoted off that list. And uh, you know, it's, thank you for your fine work uh, you know, for, for uh, making these two selections. Um, it, so in more uh, general you know, overview of the police department now with, um, uh, in the last 13 months since uh, Chief Mulhern retired and the retirement of uh, Deputy Chief Brenza and Sergeant Smallwood, um, we've effectively turned over almost every management position in the police department. So starting with uh, myself as chief, um, to new deputy chiefs, to two uh, new administrative sergeants, to a new detective sergeant, to four new patrol sergeants, everybody has changed chairs in the last 13 months, which I think is unprecedented for, for the police department to have that much movement. Um, and it's, it, you know, and using the Speedway gas station as a, you know, kind of a focal point, that went uh, flawlessly because we have the talented members of the Westmont Police Department that handle our part of that, of that uh, uh, situation. So we have talented people all over the place on the police department. Um, so the, I just want to say a couple words about all of the uh, people that are being promoted tonight, starting with Deputy Chief Thompson. He's been a member of the uh, police department since 2002, was promoted to sergeant in 2008. Uh, he spent the last six years in charge of the investigations division. Uh, he was a team leader on our uh, multi-jurisdictional task force for major crimes. Uh, he's also served um, through the uh, DuPage County Sheriff's Office on a cold case unit. Uh, they just successfully charged up a uh, cold case from Lyle, which just made the newspapers this week. Uh, Steve was part of that team that investigated um, and ultimately charged that individual for killing somebody back in 1994. 
Um, I'm absolutely proud of uh, all of Steve's accomplishments, and I, I certainly look forward to his new role as uh, my deputy chief. Um, one of my mandates when I became chief, you know, talking about secession planning, um, was to have two very capable deputy chiefs in place for when I ultimately retire and have the village have a choice between two highly talented people. And along with Deputy Chief Gruen, Deputy Chief Thompson, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. I'm glad that it'll be somebody else to, to choose, hopefully between the two of them. Um, I can tell you that there, you know, from my opinion, there won't be a reason to go outside because of the high quality of, of those two, uh, two uh, gentlemen. So um, talking now about Officer, now Sergeant Bukovic, um, he is one of the most unique people on the police department because I think he's the only person to be hired by the village twice for the same job. Uh, uh, Sergeant Bukovic was hired in 1996, uh, the first time, and uh, left us in 2002, uh, bounced around to a couple of different departments, and came back to us in 2005. Hopefully because he liked us that much. <laughs> so he can speak to that. But uh, um, Scott is, uh, has been, um, he's a certified field training officer. Uh, crime scene technician, he's a certified lead homicide investigator, uh, spent the last five years as a detective, and he's a veteran of the United States Army. So I'm very happy to have Scott aboard um, as his new role as a sergeant. Um, sergeant Rinaldi has been a member of the police department since 2000. Uh, he is a certified rage instructor, a defensive tactics instructor, a critical incident team member, recruitment team member, and spent five and a half years as a detective. Um, I would absolutely say that, uh, you know, uh, Tony was one of my detectives when I was in charge of the unit, and uh, interviewing skills and report writing and investigation, uh, he's got a nose and an eye and a mind for all of that. Um, he was absolutely uh, unbelievable with uh, drug cases. Uh, he did uh, great work with cleaning up a lot of uh, properties in Westmont for, um, you know, very obvious uh, criminal activity. So, um, I mean, my hat's off to him. He's got a great nose for that type of stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to having him as a, a patrol sergeant for the time being, and I can't say enough about all three of them. <coughs> so with that, I think I've blown through all my notes, so we will have the two uh, sergeants come on up to be sworn in by the mayor. That's perfect. <laughs> Got to do the right one. I promoted a uh, fireman <laughs> to position. I gave him a promotion when I <laughs> okay um, raise your right hand and repeat after me I state your name I, Scott do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the state of Illinois the Constitution of the state of Illinois the laws of DuPage County the laws of DuPage County the Village Code of Ordinances of the Village of Westmont. The Village Code of Ordinances of the Village of Westmont. I didn't write this. <laughs> and that I will faithfully discharge. And that I faithfully discharge. The duties for the rank of sergeant. The duties for the rank of sergeant. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. We have the, uh, the pinners come on up to the front for the pinning of the stars. The pinners, and then we'd like to take a family picture up here too if their families were after they get pinned. going to get the whole families out and up. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a picture of all the family. Congratulations. Oh. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good luck. Congratulations. We'll have fun. Thank you very much. It's a good place to be. Thank you. 
Congrats. Sorry. Yeah. Congratulations. Congrats, Sergeant. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. It's all yours. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm not the best at uh, formal public speaking, so I wrote some stuff down. I'm basically just gonna read from the sheet. I wanna thank Chief Gunther, Mayor Gunther, and the Board of Trustees. I'd like to thank the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners for selecting me from a pool of very qualified candidates for promotion. I hope we make you part of your decision, and I thank you for this opportunity. I'd like to thank the men and women of the Westmont Police Department, both active and retired. I've had the honor and privilege to work with some of the finest law enforcement officers, records personnel, and administrative assistants here at the Westmont Police Department. In that time, I've learned something from each of you that has helped to shape me to the police officer I am today. Last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank my family and friends. My family and friends have always supported me throughout my career. I'm sure my mom and dad wish I hadn't missed so many Sunday dinners, but they knew the importance of the career that I had chosen. A special thanks to my niece Madison for pinning my badge on. I hope I set a good example for you as you finish up your education and begin your career in law enforcement. I truly look forward to the next chapter of my law enforcement career, and I thank you. You know, it's funny, people would ask me, you know, before when they said I was promoted, uh, they'd ask me, you know, are you nervous and stuff like that? And I'd say, no, no, it's no big deal. But of course, standing up here in front of my friends, my family, uh, everyone else, it does kind of get to you a little bit. So uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm going to read here as well. Uh, like I said, I'm a little bit, you know, taken by it because of all the support and stuff like that. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the mayor, the village trustee, uh, board members, the fire and police commissioners, um, I really like to thank them because I know the difficulty that it is to put together a testing process. I've done this twice. Uh, the first time I was not selected, the second time I was. Uh, in investigations, we have the opportunity to work well with them to do hirings. So I know the, the kind of quality that they look for and put into, and it's a difficult job, and I think they should be commended for that. Um, of course, I'd like to thank, thank my uh, son and daughter for being here. Um, I just want uh, to acknowledge their understanding for me. Being a police officer takes you away from you know, home a lot and stuff like that. I wasn't always there for them, but I was always in, you know, in spirit, and they're always in my heart. Um, I'd also like to thank my family that was able to show up. Um, they came from far away, as far as Lena, uh, Wisconsin, so I appreciate them being here. Also, my family, unfortunately, was able to make it. Uh, I also, I know they're here with me in spirit. Um, of course, I'd like to thank the chief. Uh, and also the rest of the command staff, uh, Deputy Chief Gruen, the other administrative sergeants. Um, as, as the chief uh, stated, I was hired here in 1996, uh, my first job as a police officer. I became a res resident of Westmont. Um, I've lived here since, other than I did leave in 2002 to pursue uh, a career with uh, the California Highway Patrol. It was part of a family thing. Uh, it did not work out, so I did come back to Illinois. Um, I took a position at a different department. Uh, when I did find out that Westmont was hiring, I did want to come back here. And it's one of the things that I let the department know that I was testing, it was my intent to come back here. My friends were here, this is where I got my start. It was my home. Um, I do want to also, you know, I've had numerous sergeants throughout my career. I've been in law enforcement for 20 years. I was in the military, uh, in the Army. So I've had a lot of numerous sergeants. You know, to sit here and try and name them all and stuff like that would be difficult. Um, but I did take a little piece from, piece from every one of them. Two sergeants that I really do want to say that uh, is part of the reason why I'm here. One of them is retired Sergeant Smallwood. Um, she was one of the ones that pushed me to, you know, put in for investigations for a detective. Um, at the time I was in patrol, I was just happy being there. But she saw something to me and said that I should do, go further. Um, so I really thank her for that. Uh, the other one would be. Uh, then Sergeant Thompson, now Deputy Chief Thompson, and recently my, uh, my boss in investigations. Um, what I'd like to thank him for is uh, he is the one who was uh, the boss and uh, who gave me the opportunity to go ahead and to be in uh, investigations. Uh, and I think during that time working with him and under him uh, that I was really able to hone the skills that were kind of required to be that supervisor. Um, I am looking forward to working as a patrol supervisor. I know the importance of a first line supervisor, the responsibility for the men and women that work underneath you. Um, 
and you work with. Uh, uh, part of that is for them to be, to do the job to the best of their ability, but then take it a little bit further. Uh, our job as police officers is to serve the community. I take that oath very seriously. I will hold my officers to that same standard. And finally, I'd like to thank the residents of Westmont who support and put their faith in the Westmont Police Department. You all will need to take the oath of the office, and I assure you that I will hold myself accountable to that oath. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, who swore him in in 96? Uh, Elmer Fries. Oh, I thought it was, uh, was the, Mayor Addington then. No, it was Elmer Fries at Elmer the time, which I believe was the okay. clerk maybe? Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. Swore me in though. Yeah, I did. I got a picture of that. It's the only mistake I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that being said, let's move on to Deputy Chief Thompson. <laughs> Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Stephen Thompson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The laws of DuPage County. The laws of DuPage County. The Village Code of Ordinances of the Village of Westmont. The Village Code of Ordinances of the Village of Westmont. And, I, and that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties for the rank of deputy chief. The duties for the rank of deputy chief. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Sure. <laughs> I also wrote down uh, a few notes. Um, stole a little bit of my thunder, so uh, if I, re I repeat, it's only because that it's that important to repeat. Um, I first want to start off by, by thanking the people of Westmont uh, for giving me the opportunity to serve them for the past 15 years. I originally took this job in 2002. Uh, there was other towns that uh, had offered me jobs, Naperville and Wheaton in particular. Both were bigger towns, but the close-knit kind of family environment of Westmont uh, drew me in. So standing here today, I can't, couldn't be happier with the decision I made and want to not only thank all the, the people in the room, all the citizens of the room, the village board, uh, thank you for making this feel like home. Even though I don't live in Westmont, this is definitely a second home for me and my family. Um, I also want to thank the, the men and women of the Westmont Police Department here. Uh, it truly is an honor to serve this community with you guys. Uh, I know looking at, at each and every one of you that we've worked together in some capacity or the other, and I definitely have learned something a little from at least every one of you, and hopefully throughout the years you learned something uh, from me and continue to learn something, because I know that I, I never stop learning every day that I'm here. Um, a special thanks to the past and present members of the detective division out there. Uh, Tim, Tony, Scott, uh, Mike Weidler, who, who isn't here, uh, Tom Kajelski, Nick Lynn, Rolando Padilla, Jeff Borgart, Maggie, and Angela. Uh, you guys have all made the last six years of my career the most fulfilling so far. Thank you for that. Uh, special thanks to Chief Gunther. Um, your guidance and influence over the years have helped me immensely. Uh, I know when I was a younger officer, a uh, younger sergeant, um, I think a lot of times you saw more in me than I saw in myself. Uh, you taught me, and 
maybe you realize this, maybe you don't. You taught me how to think without ever telling me what to think. Uh, sh showed me to, to think as an individual. You never, you never did something for me. You taught me how to do something. And I've always appreciated that. And thank you for this opportunity. Um, my in-laws over there, Bud and Doris. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you for allowing your daughter to marry a, a policeman. Uh, <laughs> You guys have always treated me like a son, and I love you for it. Uh, my mom and dad over there, uh, I've watched you guys my entire life work hard uh, in order to give me and my sister uh, the best life possible. And now it's, it's moved on to, to your grandchildren. Without that example, without your encouragement and support, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, my lovely wife, uh, it's, it's no, no coincidence that as soon as I, I don't want to say met you, because me and her actually grew up across the street from each other. Uh, in 2002, we went, on, we went on our first date, and it's no coincidence that after that time that my entire life just seemed to fall into place. Uh, when it comes to my professional life, you've always been my biggest fan. You've inspired me. You've always been candid with me. You've definitely humbled me. <laughs> um, always believed in me. And when it comes to, to our life together, um, you taught me the most important thing in my life. Love like crazy. Truly are my best friend and the one I want to live my life with. Uh, my beautiful kids over there. Uh, <laughs> man, what can I say? You guys, you guys know this already, and I'm sure you're going to figure out as you grow, grow older. You know, I, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not perfect. Not always going to give you your way, <laughs> but I love you guys with everything I have. Being your dad is the greatest pleasure of my life. Uh, I know I say it a lot, and it's, it's not something that I say just to say it or out of habit. Um, I say I love you to remind you guys that you guys are the best thing that ever happened to me. So I love you guys. <coughs> you too. Uh, thank you guys for the opportunity to, to talk to my family and say thank you to everybody. Uh, I look forward to, to seeing everybody in the future, future board meetings, and, and working with you guys in the future. So thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. And then could the uh, commission stand? <laughs> These three individuals not only do the promotions, they're in the process of filling how many patrol positions? Five. Five. So a lot of hard work goes into that. I appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Yeah. With me, I don't need to be in this. No. Oh, call me out. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to uh, swear in our new um, administrative staff. And uh, as customary, we have cake and coffee in the ante room. So <laughs> Just leave following. us some. Yeah, we'll yeah. try. And Chief, we're separated by an H. I know you said this before, but we're not related. I'm glad you made that point a year later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, I have a couple of more items. I'd like to, uh, we'll wait a minute till uh, kind of everybody adjourned into the community room uh, to celebrate the promotions. We had a, a, a lot of police officers here, um, nice. honored those three individuals. And we do it in the beginning of the meeting so that everybody's here gets an opportunity to meet uh, the individuals that have been promoted. Um, at this time, 
I want to update the uh, sister city, and I'd ask uh, Larry McIntyre if he'd come to the podium and uh, give some information. Thank you, Mayor and Village Board. Um, just want to give everybody a quick update what's happening with Sister City and also the student exchange. We had our first meeting last night at the library with our host families, and um, you will all meet them soon. This is an amazing group of people, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, they're, they're going to, the students are going to arrive on November 10th and be here for about two weeks for the Thanksgiving holiday. They're going to leave on Sunday the 26th. Um, we're going to have two different opportunities in which we're going to invite the Village Board to uh, be with them and have uh, dinner with them and uh, that uh, schedule will be coming out very soon but uh, almost every other night of the entire duration they're here there's going to be some sort of a special event and party for them we're looking forward to a great time so thank you thank you and a quick update on the hundredth anniversary um, which is less than four years or four years out um, next meeting will unveil the uh, historical um, mural that's part two of the five-year process uh, we'll have the historical essay contest uh, is online now for those who want to participate. And if we want to um, meet at 5.30 uh, next meeting to have the presentation of the mural and the award winners, uh, I, what's the board's pleasure? 5.30? We'll, yeah, let's do it. We'll have it at 5.30. Good. So, um, is there a committee meeting that night? There's both, uh, yeah, there's finances, a double finance, and you know, should we push? Do we want to? Well, you think yeah, you want to still just have finance at four and then right into because you'll the have public an works hour. committee next. There's a public works committee following that at 4 30. Yeah. We'll just start at six. You'll be here anyway. If we start early, yeah, we'll just have the committee meetings. We'll start the regular okay. meeting at six. Thank you. Um, and I usually go to clerk, but what I'm going to um, do right now is that we have some other individuals to uh, recognize, and um, our scarecrow winners. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, Trustee Barker to do the honors. I have to swear in the scarecrows. <laughs> you got to swear them in. Yes. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, part of the uh, responsibility tonight is to uh, call up Larry Forsberg to talk about the Scarecrow, Scarecrow Decorating Contest that was held here in Westmont. So Larry will come up. Thank you, Trustee Barker. Actually, before, before we actually uh, invite everybody in for the Scarecrow Contest, we're going to give you a quick overview on the um, Second annual Westmont Caskets on Cast Race. <laughs> <laughs> this year we had five participating groups. We had a sixth, and I think the sixth got a little <coughs> scared about uh, who they had to face. Um, so hats off to actually our first group here, Westmont Municipal Services. Our next group, the Westmont Fire Department. Our third group here, we have the, uh, this is actually a family called the Mahoney family. Oh, wow. They stood out there a little bit, didn't they? <laughs> and then our fifth group is actually the, uh, we have uh, Expression Dance Studio, fourth group. And then our last group was the Dynamic Perception Dance Company. We had a little bit of a, we had a contest for the, um, uh, best decorated uh, casket and group, and that went to the Mahoney family. And then last but not least, for the second year reigning, <laughs> Municipal <laughs> Services took home the trophy and beat the fire department in what was a pretty close seat, but then there was a, a little bit of a problem with some wheels falling off. But uh, <laughs> nevertheless, the Municipal Services took home the uh, trophy, so congratulations to them. Now, if we could, um, for our Scarecrow contest, I'd like to call in our first group. We had three, three groups, 26 total entries, three categories. We had a business category, a community slash nonprofit category, and a category of Scarecrows created by children. We had a grand total of 6,000. 
547 votes wow. over that 10 day period. So a lot of people really got involved with this. And so um, let me pull up our first one here. Our first winner is the Dynamic Perception Dance Company. So I'm gonna ask you to please come into the room. They have a lot of their group with them today. This is what their scarecrow look like. I'm gonna have you come up here by Trustee Barker. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, that was a good one. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to want to get a, a group photo. Get a group photo. you got to get in front. Photo. Get Trustee Barker in the middle there. <laughs> get in there, Bruce. Ready? Ready, everyone look right here. One, two. And do one more. Anything you'd like to say about this scarecrow? Uh, we want to thank Miss Gwen for making the scarecrow. <laughs> no, we just had a lot of fun doing it. We had the kids had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun seeing everybody. It's, it's just fun to be a part of Good the job. community and do fun stuff like this, right, girls? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You did a marvelous job. Thank, thank you. you. Our next group is Salt Creek Ballet. And here's their creation. This one was set up over by the uh, train station. Got a lot of attention over there. actually five entries in this category and they received a total of 809 votes so congratulations oh. anything you like to say about your scarecrow it was very creative uh, so our scarecrow is just based we are a free professional ballet company so we did a fall themed scarecrow <laughs> <laughs> very nice so you got a job thank you thank you And last but not least, our category of scarecrows created by children it was with the West Hills Church. I didn't. Well, I'm glad. You, well, I'm glad you could make it. We'll hand you up here. There are four entries in this category, and they received a vote of, total vote of 199 votes. Anything you'd like to say about your scarecrow? Yeah, um, the kids from the church actually helped build this and stuffed everything. They had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, two of those children are my grandchildren. And uh, it was, I, I was surprised. I got an email today that we had won. And so, uh, or else I would have had my grandchildren come soon also. <laughs> Thank you very much. So glad you'd be here, and thank you. We look forward to doing this again next year. The response from the community was very positive. Uh, again, a great number of uh, votes this year, and uh, so we'll look forward to even greater participation <laughs> next year. Any go. questions? Was that a rumor that the fire department <coughs> might have played around with the public works scarecrow uh, after they lost? That's I haven't rumor. heard that rumor, that's a rumor. so it's, it's an unfounded <laughs> yeah. uh, piece of information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. And I'll come back to Bruce, but I'll turn to Clerk Simsky. Well, first of all, for anybody that didn't notice, Trustee Barry got here <laughs> <laughs> maybe three minutes late tops. So you did well. Uh, I want to um, announce that uh, the 2017 State of the Village Address will be presented on Friday, November 3rd at 8 a.m at the Taiwanese Cultural Center, 55 East 63rd Street. Please RSVP at westmontchamber.com. And the mayor will update all of us on everything. And then, um, um, myself and staff. And the yes, staff. Sure. So, and then I have to compliment everybody on the great trick-or-treat trail. It was so much fun, it was. 
barking more out after about five blocks. She said, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and she had way too much candy anyway. So, And everybody have a fun Halloween. Be careful. I believe ours are, I'm looking at the chief, but he's not looking at me. It's three to seven? Two. Two? Two to seven. Two to seven. Okay on Halloween day. So come out and have fun. And congratulations, congratulations to the police and fire department tonight. You guys are fabulous. I look at your men, even with their beards, they still look good. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, Jim, Jim's tinting it great. It's just a good thing. Well, well, he wants yeah. to draw attention yeah. to it, so. But they, everybody was just, and of course, I always rave on our public works department too, and of course they won the race, so what can you say? Yeah. And there sits John, our tree guy, so <laughs> we'll be hearing from him tonight, but that's all I have right. now, but thanks a lot. Thank you, and I'm gonna move on to trustees, but I'm gonna start with Trustee Addington because we've got uh, someone else to recognize this evening. Two someone else's. Two someone else's. Right. This morning, um, I was honored to attend a breakfast along with Manager Steve May and Mayor Ron Gunther because two of our Westmont folks were honored with a program that's called Everyday Heroes. And it's put on by Shaw Media and it covers the area where they have their publications. So it's most of, uh, it's all of DuPage, some of Western Cook. Um, I think they said McHenry and Kane counties. Mm -hmm. So that's got to be two and a half, three million people in that, in that area. And out of that, eight people were chosen to be honored and two of them came from Westmont. The first one is Steve Nero. And uh, Steve was honored as an everyday hero because of his volunteerism, because of the great work that he's done here as a member of this board for the last five, no, last six, seven years. Seven years, yeah. Last seven years, and of course, we all know that Steve is seeking to move on maybe to the county board, but he was honored for all of the dedication of hours and service that he's given to this community, and we're so happy to have him. And um, uh, I think it was a great honor for us to have two of the eight, one being Steve. The other one was Larry Forsberg. And Larry got it again for some of his volunteerism, the work he does with economic development and the work he does with the chamber. And uh, so kudos to both of those wonderful people. Um, they're a credit to this community uh, and, to, and to the village. And um, hopefully there'll be a lot more awards for them as time goes on. But it was an honor to be there this morning uh, and uh, see those awards presented to you too. The other six winners, they came from all over. There was an animal rights uh, activist. There was a guy who has been, done a lot of work in restoring some of the historical homes and downers. There was some people from a food pantry. So it, it, it covered everything, but you had to be nominated. And so both of our two fine people were nominated by folks that thought they were deserving and out of the several million people in the area that, that Shaw Media covers, Westman got two of the eight. So congratulations. And congratulations. To you. congratulations. And very quickly then, um, the uh, economic development meeting, which is normally on the first Wednesday of every month, which would have been November 1st next week, uh, has been canceled. Uh, there won't be a meeting because we've got the state of the village coming up on Friday and some other things. So we're going to put that off for a month, maybe into December. Um, and the last thing I have to report tonight is uh, Tuesday morning was the monthly meeting of DuPage Mayors and Managers Legislative Committee. And of course, um, this week and um, uh, I think the first week in November, the legislature, the state legislature is going into their veto session. And um, you would think that the veto session would be just what it is. And there are several bills that Governor Rahner has vetoed that are being brought back up for consideration. 
I think a lot of you saw the email that was sent out uh, for the action plan because some of those are vetoes were of, of uh, legislation that we and the Mayors and Managers Conference supported and, and would like to see those vetoes overridden. But it's also there are new bills presented. And so um, there were at least two or three that we're aware of. Uh, the question now, <clears throat> according to the folks who handle our uh, lobbyist for us down in Springfield, they're not sure they're going to get any traction during the veto session. There, there are new bills, they're there, uh, but it doesn't look like they're going to go on. The, the other thing that happened uh, Tuesday morning was that the legislative program that the legislative committee is, is recommending is done. Uh, there are five main initiatives that, that the full membership will vote on at their, at their next meeting. And uh, they include probably the most important one being to preserve local authority. And all that's kind of a catch-all, if you will, but it's all these things that, that Springfield brings up that takes the power to choose away from us and, and uh, puts it someplace else. And so we want to be sure that, that we maintain and control local authority. Uh, one of the big bills that, that's being looked at, of course, is one involving the small um, cell towers and whether or not there's going to be a bill that will allow them to override our control of where these things can be located and take it away from us. And again, that's not what we want. So uh, there'll be more information as time goes on, but um, uh, we are monitoring, we're watching closely. You'll see more action plans as more information comes out of the veto sessions. And um, the most, the, probably the worst thing to report at this time is again, the, at this point, there is no balanced budget <coughs> for how many sessions. But other than that, um, uh, we continue to monitor, continue to watch. So that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And I uh, appreciate that you're representing the community because when you go there, a lot of those bills could affect us directly. No so question. Appreciate you serving on that committee. Uh, Trustee Guzzo. Thank you, Mayor. A couple things. I was able to attend the Public Works open house. Unfortunately, the weather was not cooperative. We had over seven, of inch, seven inches of rain on that Saturday, but I do want to uh, thank Public Works Director Ramsey and all the staff for putting that together. Unfortunately, the turnout what, isn't what we had hoped for, um, but hopefully next year the weather will cooperate. We'll get our order in early and uh, we'll go forward on that. Secondly, I was also able to attend the Haunted Forest. Kudos to the Park District again. It was great. Um, I actually had a party of 14 with me, so we were able to get our own little group together. And it was very well attended, very well done. The weather was perfect. The crowds, when we left about 8.30, they were just, it was just incredible. So thank you to them. Our next Finance Committee meeting will be Thursday, November 9th at 4 o'clock. And then I also, too, want to just echo the sentiments. I think that our village services, department heads, and all of our employers are second to none. I've been in this village all my life, and I've got to tell you, I think we just have the best services and the best people working for us. And I just want to say a big thank you again, because it was just nice to see everybody come together. And um, so it is appreciated, and I just want to say thanks. And that's all I have. Thank Mayor. you. Trustee Bear. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, our next Public Works Committee meeting will be uh, our next board meeting, November 8th, I believe that is, is that? 9th. 9th, 9th. And uh, we're switching with the uh, public safety. So if you see that on the calendar, we'll be the next meeting. Uh, and again, a lot of the residents have noticed that our flowers are going away uh, for the scarecrows and then next for the holidays. So uh, the Public Works have been out uh, working hard changing that over. And then... Uh, the EIC, I'd like to invite up Larry McIntyre, our creator and coordinator of the pumpkin smashing contest that is so popular in town. And, and I know Mary Gabriel's here uh, from the EIC tonight too, so. Absolutely, thank you very much. Uh, we had over 20 participants in this year's pumpkin smashing. And uh, as we're giving kudos to Public Works, once again, Public Works shut down the streets and got everything set up for pumpkin smashing this past Saturday. And they're, they're always behind the scenes doing all the great work, so thanks again to them. Uh, but pumpkin smashing did a great job, and this was something that we came up with a couple years ago to promote pumpkin composting. This gives me an opportunity to thank Mary Gabriel, who's one of our great community volunteers. She's been on the EIC for about three and a half years, and she keeps up 
she keeps me on my toes and says, hey, can we do this? Can we do this? And one of the ideas was, can we do pumpkin composting? So first, I'll turn it over to Mary Gabriel to talk about pumpkin composting and opportunities to uh, recycle your pumpkins this year. Thank you, Larry. Um, <coughs> this year, we're having um, pumpkin composting at a new location at the Richmond Education Garden to highlight that. It will be on Saturday, November 4th from 9 to noon. If you bring in your pumpkins, we ask that you leave the candles and any exterior decorations at home and take them off. They just want clean pumpkins. And also, it's getting close to the time that people think about putting up their holiday lights or maybe they even have some Halloween lights that when they take down, they're not working or that. Save them up because starting November 20th, we will have um, holiday light recycling at the South Fire Station and at the library, and that will, holiday light recycling will go to the end of January. And then I'd like to uh, present awards for the pumpkin smashing king and queen. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to call up Amy, Amber Cork for the Pumpkin Smashing Queen. Mm -hmm. I give kudos for getting up at the cherry picker and getting <laughs> way up there to I'll also mention that uh, Amber represented uh, the Marker School District and was also featured on WGN. We had both WGN and Channel 5 out there for this year's uh, Wicked West Fest. So, thank you. Uh, Virgil? Uh, Virgil! Pumpkin smashing. Um, his splatter on his pumpkin was 520 inches and he got within 12 inches of the target. So he really... That practice pays <laughs> off. <though. laughs> Good job. And then... Um, this, this is a new award. Uh, we've never done an honorable mention before, but Kim brought out the soggiest pumpkin. And so therefore, when she dropped it, it made the loudest sound. So she's getting the best splat award. So. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much for the participation and the pumpkin uh, smashing, and we hope we see people out at the pumpkin composting on Saturday, November 4th. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Again, I uh, thank Trustee Barry for starting that commi commission but, up again. And, and uh, I'd also like to point out with Virgil, he not only got up in the cherry picker, but he keeps it working. So uh, a, a double, <laughs> double opportunities for him. So thank you, Mr. I Mayor. saw a target in the yard. Uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> and of course, our staff, John Yader, is the uh, staff person responsible to communicate with the commission. So John's involved in that too. All right, we'll move on over here to Trustee Barker. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, couple of things here I'm going to do two roles I'm going to actually give some reports that uh, Linda isn't able to do but um, last night Ginny and I had the opportunity to go to um, 100 Club of DuPage County it's a, a volunteer organization that supports uh, widowed uh, firefighters and police and they also uh, give out awards to valor awards to the police department and fire department and just a you know, quick congratulations to the Downers Grove Fire Department that uh, was involved in a rescue and then the Glen Ellen Police Department that was involved in a rescue. And I bring it up because it's a it's really a great organization. It's a nice evening and, uh, you know, talk about a classy room full of people and uh, the work that they do. And uh, Westmont has got a number of people that have received Valor Awards through that program and it's uh, really a great night. Um, Secondly, um, I wanted to congratulate everybody um, for Wicked West uh, Fest on Saturday. It was just an incredible day from 11 o'clock in the morning to you know, 9.30 at night. The uh, turnout was sensational. The smoke, pumpkin smashing, the casket races, uh, the trick-or-treaters. You know, I don't know if we got a count, but it was uh, a huge number of people, thousands of people. Um, the media was there. The uh, Haunted Forest, I heard record-breaking crowds over there as well. And then also, I wanted to thank the folks that took the bags that, uh, for the food drive to support the People's Resource Center. 
Uh, we've given out most of the bags if anybody would like one. I still have a few left, but most of them are gone into the community, uh, which is good for them. Uh, I, I'm proud of that fact. Um, there is uh, one more day to sign up for the zombie pub crawl, uh, which is uh, Saturday, October 28th from 2 to 6. And that is uh, West My, four Westmont businesses <coughs> participating in that. Walsh's, the Up Down, DJ Sports Bar and Grill, and Mists and Legends. And there is a, a house decorating contest. You can go online to sign up a home or a business for the decorating. And the list of the scary houses to be checked out will be posted tonight. Thank you. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Nero. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a few things. Our next public safety committee meeting is December 7th, right here. Uh, and then uh, just a congratulations for all the police department promotions, Deputy Chief Thompson, Sergeant Bukovic, and Sergeant Ronaldi. All well deserved and best of luck. Um, and then before I call up the fire chief, just a special thanks to all our first responders and all the departments involved with the fuel leak, seeing them on TV and extre being extremely professional is good to hear and all compliments all the way around. So, so thanks. And it's good to know that Spencer was all over it in Steve's absence. So uh, well done too, Spencer. You, you, you had the helm good. Um, and then next, I'd just like to invite up uh, the fire chief. <laughs> Thanks, Trustee Nero. Uh, just wanted to recap uh, our fire prevention open house on Saturday, October 7th. Uh, even though it was a little cool and chilly, a little windy, uh, we did get in our side-by-side uh, -side burns. We had a great attendance, uh, you know, again, about 300 to 350 uh, of our residents came to, to, to our open house. So I uh, appreciate uh, everybody coming to that. Um, the silent parade uh, went off very well this year. Uh, I'm always in the parade and I always look at uh, each individual time we go through and I just want to thank our residents for coming out and lining our streets in our village. Uh, we had a great showing again and great support. Uh, there was 25 different departments in the parade this year. Uh, so I wanted to thank everybody for that. Um, and then uh, we're having great success with our free smoke detector uh, with our residents, uh, insulation and stuff. Uh, to date, we've installed uh, 65 of the 100 uh, detectors that we have to put in our residence. Uh, we're continuing to get calls from our residents, to, and the fire inspectors are going out and install those. So, again, if you are in need of a free smoke detector installed in your single family residence in the village of Westmont, please call the fire department at 630 981 6400. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And next, uh, I'd like to invite up Chief Gunther. Talk about a few, a few things coming up with police. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Trustee Nero. Just a couple things on uh, trick or treating is on obviously Halloween, October 31st. Uh, we talked about the hours, two to dusk, and uh, this Saturday is a drug take back uh, at the police department from 10 in the morning till two in the afternoon. Um, we will not accept liquids, ointments, and um, EpiPens are, uh, has information on the website, so I'll direct everybody to the website, uh, 10 to 2 this Saturday at the police department. Give back your drugs. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chief. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Well, Sheriff, thank you. I could just make a comment. Yes. They didn't talk about it, but uh, District 201 in the police department, um, with the Chief's help, um, had an event called uh, a showing of Kelly's Hollywood and I was uh, fortunate enough to go to that event it was phenomenal and actually the movie is being played on TV now uh -huh. um, but phenomenal night and congratulations on that thank you and I'd like to thank the fire department for uh, hosting because we used uh, the fire bay uh, it was absolutely a, a wonderful <coughs> atmosphere uh, great food, good turnout. Um, the, the director and star of the movie was there, signing autographs and gave a speech. Uh, it was it was an awesome turnout. We raised uh, just about a thousand dollars for that one evening, and a huge success for District 201 and police and fire departments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm right, moving on the agenda. Um, does any of the trustees have any items they'd like to see removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'd ask Manager May to please read. 
not much to the consent agenda, so I'm not surprised nothing's coming yeah. off. Three things this evening. First is the Village Board Minutes. Board to consider approving the minutes of the Village Board meeting held October 12, 2017. Next is Finance Ordinance Number 13 in the amount of $1,292,343.74. You have the September Financial Report. Board to consider a motion to accept the financial report submitted for the month of September 2017. And lastly, there's one purchase order, Curry Motors, $86,607. As for the purchase of um, scheduled replacement of three patrol vehicles. The, and I read that amount. The two together, finance ordinance number 13 with the purchase order is $1,378,950.74. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Nero? Second, Addington. Motion made and second to approve as presented on the question. <coughs> Anybody? Seeing none, roll call, please. <coughs> Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Barry? Yes. Trustee, Trustee Little's <coughs> absent. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Addington? Yes. M motion passes. Moving on to new business. Um, 25 South Cass, Expression Dance Studio. Board to consider an ordinance approving a downtown development grant request in the amount of 3989 for Expression Dance Studio in the B1 Limited Business District. And Director Ziegler will give us some more information. Thank you, Mayor. The dance stu studio is requesting a grant to improve the building facade and install their new wall sign. The exterior facade improvements are eligible for a grant of, of up to $5,000. Um, with approval of this, there would be $2,400 remaining in the facade grant this year, and the sign meets our adopted de downtown design guidelines. Um, we're pleased to see that the wall sign meets the proposed sign code, which is up uh, for your review tonight and um, the business is obviously doing well and Amber and our dad Sam are here tonight if you have any questions. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve Addington. Second. Nero. Motion be made and second to approve on the question. Seeing none roll call please. Trustee Haddington. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Barry. Yes. Motion passes. Yeah, just a point of information, Sam, or um, how many kids do you have coming and going every day now? Because I, when I go by, I see a lot. Yes, we've actually, we're up to about 600 students now. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's been awesome. The new location is amazing. We love the facility and we're excited to add the ex exterior. And I want to compliment them too, because if you remember, there was a lot of concern about traffic and blocking traffic on Cass Avenue. They've done a great job of Thank controlling you. things. There just is no problems Thank at all. You. So keep it's doing what you're doing we're, and we're pushing it. <laughs> kudos to you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Uh, Thank, well, you. Thank you. Uh, new business B, 401 Plaza Drive, Magnet Schultz of America. Board to consider an ordinance approving a request for site and landscaping plan approval for Magnet Schultz to allow for construction of a permeable paver patio and temporary parking pad in the M Manufacturing District. And Director Ziegler. Thank you, Mayor. This is a straightforward request for a paver patio in the rear of the property. Uh, this will be used for employees to be able to have lunch and for additional parking when necessary. The, it does not trigger stormwater management because it allows stormwater infiltration through the, the perviousness of the pavers. The Planning and Zoning Commission made a unanimous positive recommendation in September, and um, the ordinance is before you tonight for approval. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve Addington. Second, Barker. Motion made and second to approve on the question. Just adding to nothing to add. I think everyone know. you know, we were there for their anniversary. Um, not too well, you and I and, and Manager May, and it's an unbelievable company. It's another one of those secret yeah. little international gems that we are pleased to have in Westmont, and um, this will work out well, I think, for them. Yeah. Can I have a roll call, please? Trust, <clears throat> Trustee Addington? Yes. Trustee Barry? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. Motion passes. New Business C, 701 Blackhawk. You store it, Westmont LLC. Board to consider an ordinance approving a special use 
request from U Store It Westmont LLC to allow a cart cartage and express establishment U-Haul vehicle rentals in the M manufacturing district. And we still got Director Ziegler for more. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a special use to allow U-Haul uh, uh, rentals in the back of the u store parking lot. Uh, there's sufficient parking. They've recently restriped it. And the Planning and Zoning Commission had a significant amount of conversation regarding whether or not there was enough access, how long the vehicles would be, and whether or not there was um, appropriate striped parking. So all of that has been worked into the conditions of the ordinance and the revised site plan was attached to, the, um, to your packet. And I'm available for any questions. Do I have a motion? So move Guzzo. Second, Nero. Motion is made and second on the question. Mayor. Yes, sir. When, when planning and zoning was talking about this and, and when they were taking testimony, was there anything that was presented that talked about need? Because we have, uh, I think, two or three places already in town that have new halls, but there might be more need. I think a couple of them are really small. They have maybe just a couple of trailers, you know. I know in the shopping center by BJ's, uh, they have them there, but they don't have all the types. They have mostly of the little trailers. The need that was discussed by the applicant was the need solely for people who are using this facility. So the restriction in the ordinance is that the U-Hauls can only be rented out for people moving items in or out of the storage facility. Oh, that's it's facility. not a, okay. a regional rental place. People can't. People who are renting regionally or nationally can't drop off vehicles here. It's not going to be a big vehicle storage area. It's just for users of the facility, limited to no more than 15 feet in length. That makes sense to me. Any additional comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Barry. Yes. Trustee Addy. Yes. A motion passes. We'll move on to um, new business D, <clears throat> side, sign code text amendment. Board to consider an ordinance approving a text amendment to Appendix A and Appendix C, Article 11 of the Municipal Code regarding sign regulations. And we've Director Ziegler. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to introduce Village Planner Henner Find, who was uh, promoted this year to Village Planner, as you all know. Um, one of the um, big reasons has been all the big projects he's taken on, um, including this sign code. So he's single-handedly -hand responsible for all the research, the 10 committee meetings that went into it, the uh, two public hearings, and he has a brief update for you. Thank you, Director Ziegler, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, trustees. Um, I do have a, a short presentation. I apologize once again to anyone who sat through this. It's, I've got it down to four slides, or I think six slides from 40 slides. Um, so basically, I'm going to briefly go through uh, the process and some of the things that we're doing with the site ordinance text amendments. Okay, so what was the background intent? So this all started about a year ago, and this was a, basically a frustration from staff and what, what staff was hearing from the public in terms of the businesses that were trying to get uh, signage within in the village. Um, basically, the sign code has been amended over time at kind of piecemeal. So it's become very disjointed. Um, it made staff uh, very reliant on interpretations of code. So gray areas that could be interpreted uh, one way on a good day and another way on a bad day. Um, it really wasn't fair to the public. It wasn't fair to staff either. Um, and then there was a really poor applicability to the current needs. Signage over time has really changed. It's really gone from what I would say is identification signage to more advertising. Um, so the propose, what staff did is propose revisions uh, with a decided emphasis um, that what the, the code should be, it should be simple to regulate, it should be comparable to other communities, um, and merge community visions with commercial success. And I kind of want to back, go back up to comparable with neighboring communities. This was uh, really a reorganization and a cleanup of the code. 
there are some sections that we did not open for comparison because it works for us. It was never a subject of, of contention. Um, and because that would also add to the length if we wanted to revisit everything that was in our code. This was kind of a focus on the fixes that needed to be made, but at least in a more comprehensive manner. So what was the process? The approach was to analyze the existing code, um, compare it to other communities, test what we were proposing for the net effect. Um, finally, is it, we're at, at the, the final stage, which would be implementing the new signage. And all throughout this process, um, we've listened to the public. We've done our best to inform and include the public so that we could um, have them involved in all aspects and be transparent with everything that we were doing. So the methods that we looked at the code, we looked at updating the obsolete text, clarifying the vague references, correcting conflicts, organizing it efficiently, um, adding some uh, new signage types, which I'll get to in a second, and deleting the old signage types that weren't needed anymore. So what was the public involvement? Like I said, we started this about a year ago. Um, it was in January. It was the first time I think we, we discussed this at a CDC. Since that time, we've been to six EDC meetings, four CDC meetings, two special meetings with the business community themselves. And I will tell you, I think at our first meeting, we had probably 40 people stuffed into this little room back here. By the time we got through our final planning and zoning commission meeting, we had none. We had two at the first planning and zoning, and that dwindled down to zero by the time we actually got uh, everything worked out. So what are the proposed amendments? And obviously, I don't have enough time to go through everything. There's a lot of text. Um, but basically, uh, one of the first things we wanted to do was amend the permit fees. We wanted to align it with the building permit fee structure. If you remember, it's probably about a year now that we're on a new building permit fee structure of 1.5% based on the cost. What we had found was that we had a, a, a outdated methodology for calculating signage. It was a $5 per square foot based on the size of your sign. We found that it was very unfair for a lot of the um, panel changes that a lot of the businesses do on a, a, on a regular basis. It would charge them basically the same whether it was a new sign or it was a, a small fix to a sign. So that really brings it to line and we have to not only address it in uh, Appendix A, which is the sign code, but also in Appendix C, which is where the, the fees are listed. Um, I've introduced some language on non-conforming signage. One of the, the first things we heard from the business community was, a, a, I'll call it a fear of will the village be coming and making people change their signs, which I think happened in our, our, our community to the west of us. Um, we beefed up the non-conforming signage language so that the existing signage that's there and still in use is protected. And then we clearly defined the triggers so that if it was to be brought into compliance, what those triggers were. Um, temporary banners, we are introducing a $25 fee. There was never a fee on those before. There was a $250 bond. Um, the bond process was cumbersome because we have to take in the money, put it into the accounts, take it back out once the sign goes, uh, is taken down. And really what, the, what it became was uh, a threat to the, the business to take your sign down or we're going to keep your money. And that was never a good way of operating. Um, we did look at other communities and what they were charging. The $25 fee is substantially lower than a lot of communities. We feel it is needed just uh, for the administration that we do in processing those, those permits. Um, wall signs, we're looking at a, a slight increase for the uh, B1 and in the downtown. Um, additional allowances for corner lots, offices, shopping centers, open sales lots. These are a lot of those gray areas that didn't have great definitions. And when staff would go and look at how we allowed it in the past, it was hard to, to decipher. So we basically figured out how to get it done and buy the code every time. Um, there is the requirement for individual letter signage. So that is a, a restriction of no new cabinet or box signs. First off, I'll tell you in the three and a half years I've been doing signage, I have virtually none that have come across my desk as new ones. They are usually panel changes. So that's an older, it's an oil, older type of sign, it's usually panel changes. Those can still occur. As long as you have the cabinet, those can still occur. That's kind of going back to those, the, the triggers for when a non-conforming sign needs to be brought into compliance. <coughs> Ground signs, we're looking at a, a better landscaping requirements. We always had it there, but it was kind of vague, so we've kind of beefed that up. Additional allowances for corner lots and shopping centers. And then a requirement for substantial bases. Um, the code already had written into it, although it wasn't very direct, 
that pole signs were not encouraged. We encourage monument signs. This actually goes a step further. It says that the sign base should be a minimum of at least 50% the width of the sign. Doesn't do anything to someone that has a pole sign. The people that have pole signs can have them. Once again, those triggers would tell us when it would have to be brought into compliance or not. Um, we've really retooled the exempt signage provision, which is kind of the last clause in, in, in the code. A lot of that was for legal revisions. Um, sign code and sign uh, litigation in the last you know, decade has really come a long way. The, you want to remain content neutral in everything you're doing. So uh, Mr. Zemanek was very kind enough to look over everything we had and try to make sure that we weren't, um, we didn't propose anything new that would be legally challenged, but we probably had some old stuff that was in there that could be legally challenged. Um, window signage, which is an exempt sign type, um, we are re, uh, proposing a reduction from 60%, which is what it was, down to 40%. I did myself even walk the entire downtown, take photos of every business to see what everyone was kind of at, to see what um, was offensive, what was not offensive, what the effect of this. I would say that in general, the 40%, probably only two or three businesses in the downtown maybe have to remove some signage. Um, We've cleaned up the A-frame signage. This is something that came out of a lot of the committee meetings. Um, uh, where they can be, what districts they can be in, how do you keep them from putting four out in front of one business that's a strip mall. Um, we've got a lot of text in there, separation distances between them, um, just to try to clean up and make that a little bit better for the overall effect of the community um, and also easy for the businesses to understand. And I think everything that we've done from start to finish, we've been doing it with the strategic plan in mind, the comprehensive plan in mind, the downtown design guidelines, the emphasis that we've been uh, giving to all of the projects that have been coming through planning and zoning, the emphasis of the corridor and how it looks. So from start to finish, we've been doing that through the, the sign code amendments. And believe it or not, that's all I have for you today. Of course, I'm here for any questions you may have. Um, I've done a lot of talking. I think I've, I've wore everyone down, but I'm happy to discuss it as long as you'd like to. I, I have to say that uh, one of the, when we, I became mayor and I know that uh, the group that came in with me, uh, Trustee Barker, Barry, and Addington, and the current board, um, made it a point to be very transparent and make sure the community knew about something before we voted on it. I think this is a good example of um, with the chamber and with the business community making sure that they understood it and it, they had comments we made some adjustments so we weren't penalizing them so and again you put in many hours and um, it, it's reflected on the uh, sign ordinance so um, I do need a motion motion by Addington to approve second Barker motion made and second on the question I, similar comment to what you made because um, I think that uh, we handled this one right with all the meetings and the and the business community and everything else but the other thing that I find that I think this whole process worked out with is it eliminates some of those things that we have complained about for a while you know the the truck with the signage all over and then they park it down by the street so it becomes an additional sign and they can move it to a different parking spot and then it's in a different spot so this is a, this is taking care of some of that for a problem and the other thing and, and I think you mentioned this early on in the process was that when you started looking at this things about signs were in 50 different places and he's brought it all into one section everything is there so if somebody wants to talk about signage they go one place and I think you've done a phenomenal job with this and I commend you for it Thank you, and I can't take credit for everything. I want to sure give, give some credit for Jill. And, <laughs> well, and we'll give her credit. For too. administrative staff, including Erica Perez, a lot of the research, I, I, it's, it's been a lot of work. So. A lot of work, Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jill put in a tremendous yeah. amount of hours. Yeah. I, I can give a comment to Mayor. I'd like to, uh, you know, the, the one thing that I, I'd like to make sure that we notify people now that there is a change in some way that it gets out to the business community and those people that would be affected because a lot of times we you know we make a real nice ordinance and we put it in a file and nobody ever sees it mm -hmm. until it becomes a problem um, but then to complement community development and this is a piece of that and 
Joe doesn't want to take all the credit, but uh, you know, I really feel that we have a community vision now and sticking with the strategic plan and putting the pieces together. Compliments to both of you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Any additional questions from the audience? Larry, anything to add? No? Thumbs up? Um, I'd ask for a roll call, please. <coughs> Trustee Adding? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Barry? Yes. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Joe. Moving on, new business E, Heritage Trees Text Amendment. Board to consider ordinance approving a text amendment to Chapter 80, Trees and Landscape, by adding Heritage Trees Regulations. And this time we're going to start off with Director Ziegler, but we got our arborist, uh, Yader, is here too. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, over time, as we've had new developments and redevelopments, we've had significant trees uh, removed from our village without a lot of consideration by the developer for preservation or attempting to work around them. Tree preservation in the code doesn't give emphasis to the size and age of trees, so a 30-inch walnut tree could be removed and replaced with a 2-inch tree, which I've got. Somewhere. Yeah, sure. Oh, here you go, this one. <coughs> so as you can see, um, you know, this is a beautiful tree that provides uh, canopy and habitat, cleans the air, helps uh, stormwater infiltration, and then it can be replaced with, you know, a smaller two-inch tree, um, which can take decades to grow um, and enhance the, the environment and our village. The goal of the ordinance is to promote conservation of these significant trees, and if they have to be removed, there's a higher replacement value. Village Forester Yader developed a comprehensive list of trees along with their associated sizes, which will continue to, to develop a strong urban canopy. Um, we originally introduced this at the um, at Public Works Committee, and after more detail was added to the concept, the Community Development Committee and the Environmental Improvement Commission made a positive recommendation to move forward with the text amendment. John, you got anything? Anything to add? Yeah, so I, I couldn't fit in the room. There's a, a lot of people here, uh, but I, I hear there's a bunch of promotions given out. <laughs> I invite you to give out one more promotion to the village's trees and more importantly to our village tree canopy, which gives us a tremendous amount of benefits. With that, um, this ordinance allows us to at least try to save some of these trees and construction sites and different size lots within town are tough to work with, but it gives us that consideration. So I invite you to consider uh, this ordinance for the benefit of the community and it will, your vote today will definitely have an impact on how this community will look into the future. And one good example is the oak trees up on North Cass, where potential development is going to be going in, we don't want to lose. Those That's a great homes. example, and actually, through uh, some recent re research, uh, those trees were on pre-settlement uh, survey records. So those trees are older than West Montsell, including everybody in this room. Um, well, they've been almost. here a long, long time. Uh, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, close. Why does everybody look at me? <laughs> I wasn't going to say. That. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, uh, so they are an asset to the community and we're uh, looking for your permission, I guess, to, to save these trees yeah. in the event that we can do so. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve, Nero. Second, Guzzo. On the question, only thing I can say about time. So we're yeah. doing it, yeah. yeah. You know, I remember two or three of the developments that came in in, in the 70s and early 80s where they basically stripped the land, took all the trees, took all the black dirt, and then if you bought a house in one of those subdivisions, then you had to buy back <laughs> the dirt and, and new trees to, to do it. And always used to amaze me that you would do that. Mm. But that's how some developers did it. I mean, they just, they just basically you had one big pile of clay. 
And uh, Steve, even where you were, that's how they did it. They just stripped the land, knocked every tree down. Okay. In... I came home a couple of weeks ago. I'm on Lindley, and I was driving down the street, and I'm going, I live on a tree-lined street, finally, you know, for all the work that was done over there, and planting trees on the parkways and everything. And what an asset that is. They it have is. The trees. It's nice. And, and I looked at the ordinance in part to make sure it did not create unfair impediments to development, that right. you're not going to have developers come in here screaming, what are you making me do? And, you know, it does provide for accommodations. You know, if, you, if you're citing a house in a certain location and you have to take a tree down, you're, this ordinance allows you to do so, but there's replacement costs that are, that are required. What's the maximum size tree that you could pick up and move? More of an issue with actually, move, well, I shouldn't say more of an issue, but I guess it depends on what the, the, the actual site is. So they have tree spades that you can pick up trees, at least to my knowledge, up to, uh, I've seen uh, even, I shouldn't say trees that size, but if you've seen on YouTube, there's been trees, you know, 100 plus year old oak trees that have been moved. And it's, mm -hmm. it's an enormous task and an enormous uh, amount of money to do that. But I guess for more of a realistic aspect, it's probably around a 10 inch tree. Yeah. And that's in an area where you can put that where, um, not that this is generally directed towards parkways, but due to the number of utilities on most of these sites, you're not able to do able anything to do that. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this basically um, makes amends for the era from 93 to 97 when yeah. things went crazy in here. So we'll get to trees. Um, even before yeah. that. All right. <laughs> uh, any additional comments? <laughs> We can fix that. Seeing none, roll call, please. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Barry. Yes. Trustee Addy. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for all. Thank you. Thank you. New Business F, ESI Consultants, Addendum 1, 6101 South Cass for at Fire Department Headquarters Stormwater Management Project. Board to consider an ordinance authorizing an addendum number one proposal from ESI Consultants for the additional surveying and phase two engineering design services for the 6101 South Cass and the Fire Department Headquarters Stormwater Management Project. We have Director Ramsey. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, ESI consultants have been retained to perform a phase two engineering design services for the construction of the stormwater management facility at 6 6101 South Cass and the fire department headquarters properties. The, pro uh, the project will, will provide detention for the future uh, fire department headquarters improvements and surrounding properties. During design process and to correct outfall concerns, a new uh, proposed basin requires a 1500 foot storm, soar, storm sewer extension along 61st Street. Addendum 1 is in the amount of $34,383 to bring the total agreement to $124,033. Um, part of this also is for the potential economic potential development that's going to be going along 61st and Cass um, that we're all hoping is going to happen in the near future. But this will obviously allow that will help provide um, the needed storm sewer capacity for that development. So this is going to not only help the fire department in that detention basin where the old Clark station was and around where the fire department is, it will also help any kind of potential growth that might be in that area too. So it's going to actually two benefits with this. Do I have a motion? Motion by Addington to approve. Second, Barker. Motion made and second. Additional comments? Trustee Bear. Yeah, Mike, is, is the phase two, is that the environmental testing? Is that is that just like for the old Clark gas station and stuff? Phase one is usually environmental. Phase two is when you really start getting into the design part of the storm sewer project. So phase one is usually environmental. Phase two is the design. Phase three is construction. That's usually how it goes. Um, the Clark station, I mean, manager may can speak to this more than I could, but that, that was already, that part of that phase is already done and it's already been okay. For now, <laughs> not my area, but I, I could remember where phase one and phase two. If mm -hmm. if it was environmental testing, I would say let's hold on it while all this is going on with Speedway yeah. because no, that's no, that probably going to be part of their you know their process. But right. uh, it makes more sense that way. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Any additional? 
Nothing, Chief? Thumbs up on that one, too. Okay. <laughs> ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Addington. Yes. Trustee Barry. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Guzzi. Yes. A motion hmm. passes. New business uh, G, Richmond Garden Intergovernmental Agreement. Board to consider an ordinance approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Village of Clareton Hills regarding Richmond Education Gardens in Apery. And I think we're going to have Manager May. Yeah, I can handle, handle this. That. Actually, you, you've seen this a couple times already uh, through administration committee and, and maybe at another committee, but this is just the our agreement we've been working on so the two communities together can uh, administer administratively uh, manage the project, although it's still in the hands of the, the volunteers and the uh, organizers that are doing that. It's just to have the, uh, the not the financing arm, but the, the ability to administer uh, work contracts and, and such. And the Village of Clarendon Hills did approve this uh, at their last meeting. Do I have a motion? So motion to approve. Nero? Second, Guzzo. Oh, got that one. On the question. Seeing none, roll call, please. <clears throat> Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Barry? Yes. Trustee Addington? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Motion passes. New Business H, Dispatch Consolidation Reimbursement Intergovernmental Agreement. Board to consider an ordinance approving an intergovernmental agreement with DuPage County to allow for reimbursement of costs related to dispatch consolidation. And I'm going to let Director Parker handle this one. So as the board is very aware, we recently consolidated, consolidated our dispatch and moved from the village of Downers Grove to Addison. Downers Grove moved to another dispatch facility, and that let the county stop funding one additional dispatch center. Because of that move, their process is that as communities move, they'll be able to fund certain pieces of that move. Part of this move required us to pay $350,000 to the village of Addison. That's something that's reimbursable by the county and we just need to approve the agreement so we can get the refund of the $350,000. Oh, absolutely. Great. Do I have a motion? So I'll move Guzzo. Second. Nero. Motion made and second on the question. Seeing none, roll call, please. <clears throat> Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Haddington? Yes. Trustee Baer? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, miscellaneous. Any uh, comment? One thing. Trustee so I'm going to say maybe uh, Director Ramsey could talk a little bit about this. It was kind of foreshadowed by this Speedway problem. But the week prior, we had uh, eight inches of rain in this area. And I'm just wondering if there's anything <coughs> new to the stormwater issues that we've uh, come across with you know, all the work that we've done, all the um, jetting and things that have been done. I know that I was out driving that night, and it was incredible throughout the whole area. But any new problems that we've become aware of? Uh, not really any new problems. Uh, unfortunately, this, a lot of the existing problems we've had in the past uh, resurfaced because it, it was a lot of rain in a short period of time. And it's something that, you know, we can do our due diligence and try to do as much as we can with our new stormwater tax with our residents and try to work and do stormwater projects. But when you get that much rain that fast, there's very little really anybody can do to manage that. Luckily for us, some of the projects we have done, it, it, the water did drain faster. So I did see some uh, improvement in some of the, 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 uh, the historical uh, flooding areas in town. But unfortunately, we still have a lot of work ahead of us to do. It's going to take a long time to do that. But as you are all well, well aware, we are working on that. Um, you know, the, the, the certain areas that we are, are historically flooded, flooded again. Uh, we work with a lot of the residents. We got there as quickly as we could. Uh, one benefit, as uh, Trustee Guzzo said, was we had our public works open house that, that, that morning when it started. So we had a lot of staff uh, there early. So we were able to dispatch them out right away. So we headed off a lot of problems with uh, just uh, maintenance or just uh, um, you know, historical flooded areas. We went out there right away and put out signs. We went out and cleaned storm sewer uh, you know, basins off. So we, we, we did head off a lot of the problems by being proactive. But unfortunately, that much rain that fast, there wasn't a lot we could do to really you know, make a huge difference. But we did make little differences all throughout the town, which we wouldn't have been able to do if we didn't have staff in there right away. 
So it did make a difference with us being there early. And you were at the public, the open house too. You saw how much rain we were getting. We were getting a lot of rain. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, we just did the best we could. Yeah. But the, right, thanks the, for your efforts. Thank you. The, the new alleys worked amazing. Yes. I mean, there, there was a huge improvement where, you know, behind your old yeah. uh, location, that, that water would be there for, for a month and a half after that. And uh, I agree. absolutely, I mean, the, the alleys. So, so when we look at those projects and we look long term, we, we can really see the improvements. And, and uh, luckily, Manning's all done there now. That's yes. usually, uh, you know, from, from nature's best back is usually just a, a pond. And, and those improvements have been, you know, yeah. drastically better. So yeah. thanks again, Mike. Yeah. Too. It, it was funny, too. Cumner going out to come, you know, I really wanted to see how that road, you know, is a perfect. You went out there, I'm not kidding, with all that rain we had, we went out there about a half an hour, 45, you couldn't tell it rained out there. That's how fast it drained on that road. I mean, that was really amazing. So that, that road really makes a big difference when it, when it, we get that much rain, it, it just goes away really quickly. So Warwick is looking really cool. nice. It's all mm -hmm. black top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's actually like a real road. So it's, <laughs> it's nice to see. No, and uh, you guys are managing that well. It's a bear of a project, and it's a mess for everybody, but it's coming together nice. Staff does a great job. You know, Noriel's been overseeing that project from day one. He's done an outstanding job. You know, staying on with the contractors and and uh, you know helping the residents. Uh, you know, making sure they get in and out of their driveways when they need to. And he's done a great job. Not easy, but it's looking nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Anything else? I do need an executive session. I promise you it'll be shorter than the amount of time I read this. But um, <laughs> <laughs> we're, I, I'd like an executive session. Um, I'm going to request a motion for executive to discuss the following matters. One, setting the price for the sale of village-owned property pursuant to Section 2, C6, pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, A, and the purchase of real estate for the use of the village pursuant to Section 2, C5, of the Open Meetings Act, and three, pending litigation in the case Sachdiv de Viva, de Viva? Sachdiva. First, I should know that after I talk about versus Village of Westmont pursuant to Section 2, C11, of the Open Meetings Act. Do I have a motion? Motion by Addington for the three reasons stated. Second, Nero. Motion be made and second to adjourn the executive session. Roll call, please. Trustee Addington? Yes. Trustee Guzzo? Yes. Trustee Barker? Yes. Trustee Nero? Yes. Trustee Barrett? Yes. And it's, it won't take long. So again, this portion of the meeting, when we come out of this executive session, there will be no further business. So this part of the meeting is uh, going to the executive session. Thank you.